Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to learn what a permalink is and how and why to change it. And we're going to specifically focus on the WordPress platform, although this would apply to any real estate website that, that you are um, building, managing, running. My name is Lori Ballen. I'm the one over here on the left, and this is my fantastic team. I have a marketing company here in um, based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I also have a real estate business and we serve Las Vegas, Henderson, North Las Vegas and Reno, Nevada. And I get to spend every single day lead generating. I don't actually work with the clients myself. Um, I've got a team of experts that do. So I get to bring in all the leads. And in doing so, that allows me to continuously test our market and show you what's working and what's not working while I focus mostly on what is working. And, um, and then as my marketing company, um, is here, my team provides marketing services for you as well. So if you need a real estate website, um, blog content, tech training, um, cultivation systems training, whatnot, check us out at balanbrands.com. Now let's head on over to permalinks. Now what a permalink basically is, is it's your .com or whatever you, your, you have your dot, it's your URL and it's the full identifying URL of the page specific page that your um, that your website has. So, for example, up here I just randomly picked something. I've got a, I got I have a cat. I have a new cat, and um, I've had to learn a lot about buying pet supplies and whatnot. So, here's an example: buy cheap pet supplies online. Okay. Now, what you'll see here is that these web pages are all ranking on the search engine results page. Okay, that's fantastic. So they're doing a lot of things right. However, there are things that um, a couple of them could be doing better and could potentially help them move up on that uh, page one search engine results page. And that has to do with their permalink structure. Okay, so here's an example. This one right here, let's go down to the organic. Let's, let's skip the paid ones. Let's go down to the organic. All right, pet supplies. This company here, which is called Pet Supplies, is ranking for their main page on their PetSupplies.com. Okay, so this is their top level domain and they're ranking for that page. This one here is ranking for an internal page on their website, a landing page on their website that is not their home page. That is what you will see a lot, especially for those long tail keywords, you know, the four, five, six, seven, eight keywords that are used inside. Google search query up here, you will see a lot of internal landing pages rather than just the main home page. Okay. Well, this URL, this is a permalink. This is the identifying, this identifies the page. Okay. This here, dog.com is their top level domain name. So their main domain name is dog.com. After the slash is what identifies the page. So it's kind of like an address. It's telling Google when somebody clicks on that this link here, send them to this address on my website, which is the page on the website. That's how I like to explain. Um, think of it like an address. Well, what comes after this slash uh, can increase or decrease your click through rates from this page. So somebody might see this and that URL is not nearly as appealing as this one or as this one that has the word pet supplies in it, right? Because it's got a number 823. Um, actually, this one has a number in it too. Or this one, which is really not good, which has general.cfm question mark GID equals 142. Well, that's not good for general search engine optimization and it's not good for click-through rates, getting people to click on your um, listing here. So I'm going to show you here how to change this on your WordPress um, website in your dashboard. So click on over to your dashboard. We're just in my dashboard here and you'll see some extra things in my dashboard that you don't have simply because these are plugins or or something that I've added or I've customized my dashboard. I have them all closed now as to not confuse you too much. On the left hand side we're going to go down here to settings and we're going to find permalinks. So dashboard, settings, permalinks. Click on that. By default, your WordPress theme, your WordPress may have already been set up under this one here, plain. 
If it's set up for plain, all you're going to see is your top level domain, which in my case is lauriballon.com slash question mark P equals one, two, three. That is not what you want to have as your primary domain settings. Okay. You will see this no matter how you're set up on things like, um, one of the plugins that I use is called tweet this. And what tweet this does is I'm able to put in this, uh, I'm writing a blog and I can put in this little, um, actually I'll show it to you. Hold on. I just made one. Let's, let's look at it real quick. So that then you can see where those other permalinks might come into play. Okay. I just created this blog post this morning called what is a permalink? Obviously tying into this video. So here's this little thing called tweet this. This is just a cute little plugin. And what happens is when you're, what we're doing is we're encouraging social shares. So when they click this, it opens their Twitter automatically and it posts whatever you put in that box. And then it shortens the link by creating that short permalink. That's okay. You're going to see that. Don't freak out. That's okay. It's basically its version of shortening that long URL that would take up too many characters on a tweet. That's okay. Where you don't want to see that is on these search engines. Okay. You don't want to see this on, um, on, on, on any other type of paid advertising or anything like that either. Okay. So here's your options. There's the plain version. You have day and time. Some people set it to day and time, assuming that that date will be beneficial. Well, here's where it's not beneficial. Let's just say you're creating evergreen content. So you're creating something that is intended to last forever, evergreen. It's not going to expire. It's not time sensitive. It's not about the market of the moment. It's a, it's, it's a page that, or a post that you believe could, could stand the test of time. And so you want it to be up there. Well, if you put a date stamp on that in the URL, somebody's going to think it's outdated. And that could lower your click-through rates from that search engine results page or on your advertisement or wherever that URL is showing, okay? And on this one, you have month and time. So that'll just show the month. But again, you run into that, you run into that date factor um, being an issue when people see that in the URL. And then you have numeric, which I don't like at all. And then you have post name. This is what's ideal, okay? So you have HTTP slash slash, or, or if you're set for your www, which www is no longer necessary anymore. So you have lauriballon.com slash, and then words are going to show up here. Keywords are going to show up here. Words from your title are going to show up here after that slash. And I'm going to show you what's ideal and how we're going to change this, okay? When you do it this way, the words that come after that slash is called the slug, S-L-U-G. This is the slug. So this is your top level do domain name. This is your TLD, your top level domain name. Keywords don't help you when you're in the rankings anymore, specifically in that top level domain. But then you have your slug, which is anything that comes after that slash, and those do still have um, some weight. Even if it's minor, it's still a best practice to put a keyword that you're targeting in that slug, okay? Keep in mind that, you know, SEO is constantly changing. Google has gotten so smart. And with, with your, when you're trying to optimize for the search engines, um, some of these best practices may not even do a whole lot for you in the search engines, but they may still have an indirect effect that you don't realize, or they may very well have a direct effect on the ranking factors um, with Google. Google does not tell us, this is exactly how to rank on the search engines. You know, they don't, they don't want people out there learning their formulas and, and creating a, a method so that they can go out there and rank everybody on the search engines. However, there are some, some content guidelines and um, quality guidelines that they give us, but ranking factors are generally determined by search SEOs who work out there in the industry that test and measure and prove that this did make a difference in my rankings or this did not make a difference in my rankings. And then they kind of hash that out and debate, debate about that. So keywords in the top level domain, um, we believe in 2017 are not a direct ranking factor. Um, in fact, they can look spammy and keywords in the slug after the slash after the top level domain are still um, a ranking factor is still a, a best practice. So here's how it's done. Let's say we're creating a new blog post and we've done our keyword research and we know that 5,000 people a month search the term how to sell my house fast and we want to get listings. 
And so although Google reads topic and lots of keywords would apply there, it's still a best practice to use our main targeted keyword in the title tag. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. And we're going to create a blog post called how to sell my house fast and for top dollar. Okay. That's going to be our title. Now, automatically WordPress creates a, a permalink, which includes your top level domain name, and then it includes the slug. And if you have your permalink set up correctly, these will be keywords. If it's not set up correctly, go back because it'll be question marks or numbers or whatever, and you need to change that default. Okay. Be careful guys. If your WordPress is already set up for plain for this and you go in and change it now, and every, every URL changes and there's no re automatic redirects corrected, you'll break everything. You'll have all these 404. So there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. My suggestion is if you've already built a ton of pages, get help first with your redirects be, if, rather than just changing your permalink structure. Today's tutorial, I'm more guiding people that are just starting off on their websites, how to set their permalink structure up to begin with correctly. But if you've already got an incorrect permalink structure and you want to get that corrected, you might want to call us at Valen Brands to see if we can get that taken care of you, taken care of for you with, with some redirects. Um, and it might not be a good idea to shift it at all, depending on how large your um, current database is. Um, so let's, how many pages are on your website? So let's, let's look at, um, so we're setting this up for the first time. We're just getting going on it. How to sell my house fa fast and for top dollar. Okay. And we've got this here. And if your permalink is setting up P equals one, two, three, four, and you don't want to go set it up for all of your pages because you don't want to break anything, you can at least go in here and edit it from here. Okay. And go ahead and put a correct slug in there. So we're going to take out, um, it'll automatically take out some of these stop words, these preposition prepositions, and now it's leaving the most important words, sell house fast top dollar. Well, that's not my keyword I'm targeting, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be exact on this in this case, and I'm going to put how to sell my house fast. I want to increase those click-through rates when somebody sees that URL underneath that title, and I want to have that exact match keyword phrase in the slug um, in this particular case, and it's not too long of a slug, so I'm okay with that. Now, the length of your URL from, from my studies are, is not a specific direct ranking factor. Like you, you're not going to get deans because you have 200 characters in that slug, but as a best practice, it's better to have it shorter. It can decrease your click through rate. So you're showing up here on the SERP on the search engine results page and they scroll down past the ads. They immediately go to the organic and they're just skimming super quickly. This, if you're, if that exact match key, if, if the keyword in the title, if the keyword matches what they typed into the search bar, so that let's just say they actually type in how to sell a house fast, it'll be highlighted in their URL and in their meta, in their um, description here. This is their meta description. It'll be highlighted in that snippet and in, the, in there. So if I'm really focused on people typing in that exact match search term, that's who I want to go after. I want that highlighted in the URL. I want that highlighted in the in the in the meta description. I'm going to put it in there exactly the way I want it to come up. Okay. So um, let's go back now. And now we're going to write this incredible blog post. And if you follow my trainings, I teach you exactly how to create blog posts, how to optimize the blog post uh, with the, for, the, for the consumer, for the visitor, and then also for the search engines and how to provide quality and how long they should be and what they should include and how to make them mobile friendly and all that good stuff. Uh, down here, I have something called Yoast SEO. Now Yoast is a free plugin and then they have a premium option, paid option. And the free Yoast plugin um, is kind of a guidelines for your, your search engine optimization. It tells you, you know, maybe you should go back and do this with your title tag. Maybe you should make a, have a longer meta description or a shorter meta description. Um, you know, your keyword hasn't been set. So in this case, we're going to do how to sell a house fast. And then it's going to tell us, okay, well, that's your keyword, but it's not in your title. That's your keyword, but it's not in your meta description. Um, you don't have any images. We suggest adding a video. Here's some semantic keywords that we think might make sense as well. Or here's, here's the prominent keywords in your blog post that we believe your, your blog is about. Um, does that really apply? You know, do you think you've covered enough of this topic? 
And they're just kind of like best practices, hints, you know. And I was a little concerned recently. I thought they were a little outdated, but they've done some major updates to their plugin, and I'm quite happy with what they've done recently. Um, and so this is a great idea to put your Yoast SEO um, plugin on here as well. So that's it for today. This is what I wanted to make sure we covered today was was, um, was uh, how to how to adjust your permalinks in your WordPress settings and why they're so important. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Lori Ballin for regular tutorials on building your real estate websites, on um, ranking on the search engine, social media strategies, pay-per-click marketing. And again, if you need help with this, head on over to ballinbrands.com where your lead generation team. And if you'd like to learn this at home, I have a complete training system at theballinmethod.com. And I'm Lori Ballin with Keller Williams Real Estate. Thank you for joining me today.